1940, excuse me, 1939, it must have been, at Cornell when I was a graduate student. My history had always been the West, that is ancient Greece, well, ancient Middle East, Greece, Rome, Middle East, Middle East, Middle East, medieval Europe, modern Europe, and the rest of the world joins history when the Europeans discover it, invade it, conquer it, or do something, bring it into the West. A very ethnocentric and naive vision of the human past, and we all knew there'd been a China long before 1839, but it wasn't part of history. History is what happened, and what happened where liberty, that was the, the vision behind this version of history, happened. It was a very considerable construct, but my teachers didn't know how it had come to be. They just taught it routinely because that's the way they had been taught themselves. They'd never thought about it. And Toynbee was like a revelation because all these other civilizations are part of history too. And if you're going to understand the human past, you have to master a much larger array. And uh, when I finished my PhD, I had the feeling that my education, my ambition to understand the human affairs in general uh, was just beginning, that I had, I had never, I, I, I only knew a very small part of the history of the world. And in due course, uh, decided to try to write that book which combined with the Toynbee vision of separate civilizations, the proposition that borrowing from neighbors was the easiest way to change your own ways. It's when you met something that seemed attractive or threatening that you took note and did something to change the way you've done things before. Now this came to me largely from social anthropology, a uh, study of the Indians on the plains and how Items of the horse culture that the Spaniards brought into the New World spread northward up the Great Plains. This had been done in the 1920s and 30s by American anthropologists with great precision. Little things like when you, how you cut the, the leggings of your trousers, wearing trousers for that matter, to ride, ride a stride a horse, all the accoutrements. And they could do this by looking at artifacts seeing the date approximately, and watching it move north through, uh, from Mexico through the United States into Canada. And I thought that was a very persuasive image of how social change pr uh, pr occurred, and that you would project that onto the history of the civil interactions of civilizations, not just sporadic and occasional as it was trying to be, but persistent and consistent. And that's the basic idea of this book. They're separate civilizations, they're constantly in interaction with one another, and that is what made history, and this is the, the plot of the book.